and welcome to Royals at the Ranch for Thursday, June 16th, 2022. This is the series where we discuss Python Regis behavior, temperament, and training. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary, and in this episode, we're going to have a case study. Then we're going to have a training talk, Patients with Shy Snakes, it's a very important topic. Then we will have a segment that's everyone's favorite, Royals in Your Homes. This is the first time I think we have specifically done an individual case study of one of our snakes, but I think it is very pertinent because I get so many questions about how do I work with my snake if they hide all the time? How do I work with a shy snake? How do I target train a shy snake? Finn Rao is a Python Regis. He was hatched on December 10th, 2021. He arrived on March 2nd, 2022, and he was produced at Canova Reptiles. He's a male blackhead leopard Mojave and he was completely chosen at random. We did no prior temperament assessment or anything on him. And we did that on purpose because I previously got a snake from Canova that we did temperament testing on and a whole bunch of preliminary things with her and to see if that would make a difference in how she acclimated here. And it certainly has. And if you're wondering who that snake is, it's Phoenix and she is just excelling. She's even doing better with her training than some of my carpet pythons. But Finn Rao was chosen at random, and I think he is more typical of a Python Regis that you're likely to get if you just randomly choose one. Six weeks after arrival, Finn Rao was just sticking his nose out when the keeper was present. Prior to this, he was not visible at all if a person was in the room. It took him a little over a month before he would at least just stick his nose out of his hide if I came in the room. And that's what this video was of, and I've got him circled here, just his little nose in this photo, but the lights were off. So I know it's a little dark and a little difficult to see, but he ate his first meal at six weeks here too. He didn't eat prior to his sixth week here. He was just quite shy. He hid most all the time. I did catch him out and climbing on this perch and moving around his enclosure when I first came into the room a few times, but as soon as I came into the room, he would go on his hide. And so at six weeks, he ate his first meal and he just started sticking his nose out when I was in the room. All right, after that, so between about six and eight weeks after he arrived, he was sticking his nose out when I was in the room and when the light was on and he was keeping his nose out if I took the lid off. There's his little nose sticking out right there. And he was now starting to eat a meal paired with the target if the target was left in his enclosure with the food on it and I would leave the room. And that's what this video is showing is I would put the frozen thawed rodent on the target and I would leave it in there for him and I would come back several hours later or the next morning and it would be gone. Now keep in mind that prior to arriving at our facility, Finn Rao had only been eating live. We do not feed live here, and my expectations of the snakes is that they eat frozen thawed. And I just wait for them to give me behavioral signals that they're hungry, and then I offer frozen thawed in a number of different ways to see if they take it. And I basically just wait them out, and I don't offer that often. So, for instance, he ate this rodent this time. But if he hadn't, I wouldn't have offered again the next night. I probably would have waited a week or two and offered again. As I already mentioned, it was six weeks before he ate the first time with us. And he was investigating this rodent and the target while I was standing there. And then I did end up leaving the room and it took him, I don't know how long before he ate it. I came back several hours later and it was gone. Now this brings us to the nine to 10 weeks after arrival point. So Finn Rao at this point was starting to stick his nose and neck out when the keeper was present and when the light was on and when I had the lid off. He was eating frozen thawed from tongs paired with the target and it was taking him two to three minutes, maybe longer the very first time that we did it. Whereas before I was putting the target in there and leaving the rodent on it. And he, at this point is eating both mice and rats. And remember, I only feed frozen thawed. He was eating live mice at Canova. But at this point now we're at nine to 10 weeks after arrival here, he was eating both mice and rats 
frozen thawed. I had at first paired the target directly with the food a couple of times. And now this time, what you're seeing in this video is I've put the target in and I'm waiting for him to acknowledge it in some way. And there was a tongue flick. You had to look really close. I probably should have blown that up. But he tongue flicked at the target. He starts to just barely stick the tip of his nose out. And that is a significant enough sign for this snake, who is relatively shy, for me to go ahead then and acknowledge that by delivering him the reinforcement. So I wait for definite tongue flicks. I wait till I can definitely at least see his nares poking out of the hide. And then I go ahead and deliver reinforcement. For this particular snake, those are substantial steps and I have to reinforce those. Now at this point, these are some reminders I have for you. Patience and being hands off has supported this particular snake's progress and should support any similar snake's progress. Continued perseverance is going to pay off. So now is not the time to start becoming impatient and pushing too hard. I'm just gonna to continue to persevere and do what I've been doing with him and reinforcing baby steps. At this point, the keeper and trainer have to continue to remain patient. Moving too fast or starting to expect too much at this point is likely gonna cause setbacks. All right, now we're at between 10 and 12 weeks after arrival. And you see that he was already out and waiting for me before I came into the room. So this is a huge step for him. He had his head and part of his neck out at some point before I even came into the room, turned on the light, took the lid off. Now, whether he heard me or smelled something or whether he just decided every night this was what he was gonna do was wait to see if I came in with food, I was happy that he started doing this. And so 10 to 12 weeks, he's sticking his neck out nightly with the keeper present, the light on. He's seemingly curious as if activity revolving around food might happen and he's waiting to see if that's the case. I do stuff in the room with the lid off and he's not retreating back into his hide. Big steps for him. At 12 to 14 weeks after arrival, he's sticking his nose and neck out with the keeper present and the light on and the lid off and he's eating frozen thawed after presentation of the target and he's doing it in less than a minute. So if you look really closely here, you can see tongue flicking. He starts to come out with his head and neck he slowly starts to move forward and works up the courage to investigate the target. And then when he comes out, I go ahead and deliver the reinforcement. Total time for this particular session between the time when I presented the target and when I gave him the reinforcer was 55 seconds. And it probably would have been quicker, but I dropped the rodent twice. So this is a super small, um, fuzzy because I was going to do more than one repetition and believe it or not sometimes the smaller rodents are more difficult to hang on to with the tongs than the bigger ones but he did excellent here so now we're just over three months here and this is how he's doing this brings us to our training talk and I hope that case study was helpful for you but it really drives home all of the points that I want to make in this training talk be patient with shy snakes the snake that you see in this video, Mesmer, it took 13 months to get this. 13 months of me basically leaving him alone, doing activities in front of his enclosure, letting him see other snakes train on this scale station in front of his enclosure, just leaving the scale sitting in front of his enclosure along with other different types of stations, and then slowly target training him just when he would tongue flick out of um, his hide opening, and then when he would stick his head out of his hide opening, and then his neck, and then when he would move to the target about halfway the distance between his hide and the door, and then all the way to his rock, and then to his door threshold. And then I targeted him over the threshold one session. And from there, he started sitting at his door nightly for about a month and I opened the doors for about three nights in a row while I was working, and he just chose to come out and explore this station. So again, this is at the 13 month mark, and this was for a very shy and fearful snake. So what does this teach us? Well, if you're dealing with an extremely shy and or fearful snake, 
you need to start your relationship with that snake with no expectations zero expectations of them leave them alone and wait for them to initiate some type of behavior you are going to have to work with the snake in front of you and you don't need to try to make them into something they're not it's not going to work it's going to backfire on you you work with the behavior that they offer you and modify your behavior based on your snake's behavior there should be absolutely no pressure and no time limit placed on you or the snake and through a combination of passive habituation gradual desensitization and low-key active habituation you're going to help the snake build confidence and develop a comfort level with you and with the environment around them to the point where they can do things like this and choose to come out on their own. All right, I want you to check out this series of videos because I go into so much more detail about working with these types of snakes in all of these videos, choice-based handling first steps, gradual desensitization part one, presence and proximity, target training shy snakes, encouraging shy snakes to interact, and managing a shy snake removal, enclosure cleaning, and training. If you watch this series of videos, I think you will have a much better understanding of what I'm talking about as far as having no expectations, going slow, and setting no time limit on things, and modifying your own behavior based on your snakes. Well, thanks for learning. Now it's time to enjoy. Alright everybody, thank you so much for joining me once again for an episode of Royals at the Ranch. Please send me photos of Royals in your homes or some short videos of Royals in your homes. If you have questions or want to submit content, you can reach me at BehaviorEducationLLC at gmail.com. Through my website at BehaviorEducation.org, consider becoming a patron and you can find us on Patreon.com slash BehaviorEducation. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course right here on YouTube. Thank you so much, and until next time, everybody, please remember to be kind and love your animals.